Today, I'm going to tell you a story. A horror story. About abandoned plot lines. <laughs> In the golden age of Fear the Walking Dead, there was a villainous group known as the Proctors. They were intimidating, powerful, and widespread across the Mexican-American border. But after the creative teams behind Fear were changed between seasons 3 and 4, the Proctors would never be seen again. In today's video, I'm going to take you through who the Proctors were in the Walking Dead universe, and I'm going to try my best to find an answer as to why their plotline was abandoned going to the fourth season. If you like this type of content, be sure to hit that like button and drop a sub down there if you're feeling generous. Unlike most villainous groups in the Walking Dead universe, the origins of the Proctors actually predates the apocalypse. As stated by their leader and evident from the badges all the members don, as well as their level of organization so early on in the timeline. Established as a motorcycle club, the Proctors had chapters spanning across the American-Mexican border. The president of their club, even before the outbreak, was Proctor John, a brutal and remorseless, yet influential man, responsible for the group's rise in power with his ties to the Mexican cartel. Following Monument Day and Operation Cobalt, the Proctors had fled to the state of Baja California in Mexico, through John's connections, taking refuge in an abandoned bullfighting arena. Hoarding resources, news would get around quickly across the Mexican wasteland, as survivors would be drawn to the city of Mexicali in hopes of trading the resources they had for the resources they needed. Seeing the opportunity presented, the Proctors would transform the abandoned bullfighting ring into a flourishing trading outpost, renamed El Bazaar. The outpost was positioned close to the American border, attracting survivors from both countries. However, the outpost was heavily guarded, so if anybody started acting up and jeopardizing the safety of the bazaar, or owed a debt to someone within, they would be chained to the fences and forced to fight the dead, until the price was paid, whichever form that took. The proctors would charge a fee for entry, which was whatever they deemed acceptable, but the goods that could be found within would be worth it, as you could find survivors bartering pretty much anything food, muscle, or even drugs. One of the most creative items seen inside being zombie brain stems, containing pure adrenaline, a hell of a high for a post-apocalyptic thrill seeker. Some survivors could even find long-term jobs inside the bazaar under the Proctors, as seen by Nicholas Clark who takes up collecting these fresh brain stems from the dead. It was a near perfect system. And with Mexico not seeing their cities bombed by Operation Cobalt, unlike America, there were plenty of survivors to take advantage of. In the Fear of the Walking Dead episode, Things Bad Begun, Alicia Clark is captured by the Proctors and taken to John, revealing to Alicia El Bazaar was simply step one of their operation. As the Proctors were actively planning to expand their reach from the Pacific coast to the Gulf of Mexico, setting up a series of trading outposts across the border. The only thing holding John back was a growth on his spine. But lucky for him, the Proctors even had access to Old World doctors, even if they may have lost their license and fled to Mexico. Regardless, the one thing holding John back was removed. With this kind of luck, you would think he would want to take it easy for a week or two. However, Greed would soon get the best of Proctor John, as he would set his prospects on a functioning dam located in Tijuana, set to be the Proctor's next and most valuable trading outpost, as it controlled the flow of fresh water to the desperate survivors of the city. However, it was already occupied by another group. Victor Strand was THE con man of the apocalypse. And with that being said, it wouldn't be a shock when he found himself in debt to the Proctors. And to save his own skin, and the Clarks as well, surprisingly, he would propose an easy takeover of the dam in exchange for their freedom, using his charm to manipulate his connections within. The Proctors would eventually gain control of Gonzales Dam. However, John's plans would be foiled by our fear crew in Season 3, Episode 16, 
as the dam was rigged with C4 and blown up with John and the Proctors still on it, in a classic double cross by Victor and the Clarks. Basically. Honestly, this entire conflict could be its own video entirely. With all its twists and turns, it's such a great watch. But the dam is destroyed, and fresh water is freed from the clutches of the Proctors to the people of Tijuana. Strand and the Clarks all survived the explosion. Nick was even standing right next to Proctor John when it went down. So surely John and the rest of the gang survived as well. It's not like every single Proctor was on the dam when it went down, considering how widespread they were. Now, going into Season 4 of Fear, hey, the Proctors no, were hey, still- we're done. We're done. That's it. Wait, what? Yeah, they got them. That's it? Yeah, no, they're done. That's right. This event was the last time we ever saw or heard from John or the Proctors ever again in the Walking Dead universe. And for that matter, it's pretty much the last time we even hear about the damn conflict. There's a few lines in Season 4 given by Strand, basically just saying, we found a cave, thanks for saving us, Madison. Now, you may be confused, or maybe even annoyed by this unsatisfying wrap-up. Well, now you understand how the rest of us feel. This was nowhere near a satisfying finale for the villainous group. In fact, it felt like they were just getting started. How large was the Proctor's influence across the border? Did John survive the dam? What about El Bazaar? Surely the plans for the trading outposts across the Gulf of Mexico will be addressed in Season 4. Right? Right? These questions would never be answered. As mentioned at the beginning of this video, Fear saw a change of creative teams in between Season 3 and 4 of the show. At the end of Fear's third season, showrunner Dave Erickson chose to step down, passing the torch down to Ian Goldberg and Andrew Chambliss, who would be the new showrunners going forward from the fourth season. Although judging from some interviews we're going to get into, it doesn't seem like the transition was very smooth at all. In this change of creative teams, virtually every plotline set up by Dave Erickson was dropped. The unique vibrant Mexico setting was traded in for a grey filtered Texas, old protagonists were given new personalities, and then traded in for new protagonists anyway. And most importantly for the topic of this video, the Proctors were dropped in favor of the Vultures, a group of villains that wait for you to die, then loot your camps. Yeah, okay. You may be thinking, how do we know this wasn't intended as the proper end to the Proctor storyline? Well, besides it being extremely unsatisfying, in an interview with Hollywood Reporter shortly after Season 3's airing, Dave Erickson is quoted in saying, The irony is that I see Season 4 more than I saw Season 3, and I had a pretty good sense of Season 3. There are some things we laid out into these last few episodes that I would love to see play out. I would love to see Ray McKinnon's Proctor John as our big bad going into season 4. The interview then asks, You don't expect those ideas are necessarily where the show is going to go next. Have you discussed any of your thoughts with the new showrunners? And Dave Erickson is quoted in saying, God no. <laughs> That's the bittersweet part. When you're so invested in a story, you have a pretty clear sense of the characters, there are elements even going back to the pilot of the show that I would have seen arcing out until probably even season 7. I think it will be probably completely different, it'll be its own thing. If you ask me, that doesn't really sound like somebody who chose to leave, but that's what Erickson officially stated so who am I to say any different. So by all accounts, season 3 was merely a chapter in the story of the Proctors, a very early chapter at that. Erickson had plot lines lined out all the way up to season 7, and if this interview is to be believed, which we don't have a reason to think it shouldn't be, it sounds like the new showrunners didn't even ask him for his plans. So what happened here? Why would the new showrunners sacrifice an already established villainous group and plotline in exchange for the vultures? It's a question that's been bugging me ever since season 4 of Fear premiered. So I knew I had to do everything in my power to try to find the answer. I started off my search like any other great investigation with a misspelled word in Google. 
I thought reading interviews straight from the horse's mouth would be a great place to start my search, but it just led to even more confusion. We end this season with Morgan and Madison going out to a boat, so I think it's safe to say that Season 8 will have a very different environment from what we have seen before, and it will, in many ways, be centered around water. What could it mean? Were the showrunners playing some sort of sick joke on me? Right now, we are really just focused on telling the story that we have sort of set up and promised at the end of Season 4 going into Season 5. Ah, uh, yes, because they were so well known for following through on plot lines between seasons. I had to laugh. <laughs> but a short chuckle would not satisfy my craving for answers. The closest thing I could find of Ian and Andrew addressing the drop plot lines comes from an interview with Hollywood Reporter, where Chamblis states, This show constantly reinvents itself. We've seen the location move from Los Angeles in Season 1 to getting on a boat in Oh, so they did know about the water- oh my god. To getting on a boat in Season 2, and then being in Mexico, and then living on a survivalist ranch on the border in Season 3. We see ourselves continuing that tradition and carrying the show forward to the next step. Okay, well, the show was always reinventing itself, but it never dropped plot lines between seasons. So this answer did not satisfy the question of what happened to the Proctors. And soon, I grew frustrated. My questions began to consume me. I was no longer able to enjoy the time with my friends. I couldn't even sleep, because when I did, I would see his face in my dreams. I then knew I was going to have to travel a lot farther for my answers than I first believed. My travels took me all across the country. I even made it all the way to the west coast, and still no answers. I wasted so much time, and before I knew it, years had gone by. That's when I realized I needed to take a step back and reevaluate. I think it's safe to say that Season 8 will have a very different environment from what we have seen before. It sounds like the new showrunners didn't even ask him for his plans. Yes, it was all clear to me now. I had to start back at the root of the issue. And within the rubble, I saw it. The answer to why the new showrunners abandoned the Proctor storyline. <laughs>